Hello students, today we will discuss about the abdominal aorta. You know that abdominal aorta is a very big artery which is present on the posterior abdominal wall when you will have the dissection of abdominal cavity. So when you will have the abdominal aorta, the first thing is that abdominal aorta begins at the aortic hiatus. Now what is hiatus? Hiatus is a gap between the posterior part of the diaphragm and anterior part of the vertebral column and this is present at the level of T12. So when you will have the question at what level abdominal aorta starts that means at what level the thoracic aorta continue as a abdominal aorta answer is T12 level at this level what will happen that the aorta enters into the abdominal cavity from the gap behind the diaphragm and more specifically at the level of lower border of T12. So in this image you can see that this is your hiatus and this hiatus is providing the entry of aorta into the abdominal cavity. It runs downward slightly to the left on the front of lumbar vertebra in when you will see the posterior abdominal wall. So this is something is important that when you will have the abdominal aorta, this abdominal aorta will not run vertically downward, but it is having slightly towards the left side, clear? The second thing is that at what level abdominal aorta terminates into its two terminal branches? So the answer is that at the lower part of the body of L4 vertebrae. So now there are two numbers which you have to understand. It starts at the level of T12 and it ends at the level of L4 vertebrae, clear? This bifurcation can be made on the anterior abdominal wall as a point approximately 2.5 centimeter below the umbilicus. Now the students has to keep this thing in mind that this last line is about the surface marking. Now the confusion is here. Some of the students ask that, sir, it is a structure present on the posterior abdominal wall, but you are saying that we are marking on the anterior abdominal wall. Now see, my dear friends, whenever we are doing surface marking, we are assuming that you know where the abdominal aorta present on the posterior side. So it is not present on the anterior abdominal wall, it is present on the posterior side. But this important thing is that when we are talking about the bifurcation, of the aorta, it is 2.5 centimeter below the umbilicus that will correspond to the L4 vertebrae. Clear? Now, what are the relations of abdominal aorta? So when you will open the abdominal cavity, first thing is that abdominal aorta is a retroperitoneal structure. So you will find that when you are doing the dissection, you have to first remove all the organs, you have to uh, empty the whole abdominal cavity that is peritoneal cavity and when you will remove the posterior abdominal wall peritoneum on the posterior side of the peritoneum you will find the abdominal aorta and inferior vena cava. Now from above downward which are the organs cover its anterior side. So this is what you have to understand. The first is the body of pancreas with the splenic vein which embedded inside the body of pancreas. The second organ you will find the left renal vein and you will find the third part of the duodenum. Now here you have to understand that I told you that the abdominal aorta is a retroperitoneal organ but these are also the retroperitoneal structure. So they directly come in contact with the abdominal aorta, clear? So there are important concepts to understand that if I have to dissect or I have to approach the abdominal aorta from anterior side after opening the peritoneal cavity, you have to first remove the intestinal loop. Then you will find that still the peritoneal cavity is posteriorly covered by the peritoneum. And when you will remove the peritoneum, you will have some retroperitoneal structure. And behind those retroperitoneal structure, you will have abdominal aorta. So in this image, you can appreciate that this is your third part of the duodenum. And this third part or the horizontal part is crossing the abdominal aorta from right to left side. The second thing is that this is your pancreas. Now this portion we have removed from this part and you can see that 
behind this part of the pancreas, you are able to appreciate there is a vein. Now this vein is coming from the left side and this is your splenic vein. And this splenic vein runs along with the upper border here on the posterior side of pancreas. So when you will see the structures which are lies anterior to the abdominal aorta, from above downward you have the body of pancreas and inside the body you will have the splenic vein. Below that you have the left renal vein which is here and below that you will have this horizontal or third part of the duodenum. Now in this image if you will see you what you are able to realize that this is your left side renal vein. Now this left renal vein is going to open into the inferior vena cava which is on the right side. So the right vein is not going to cross the aorta but left vein of your left kidney is going to drain. So when you are having the uh, structures you have to understand that is your pancreas along with the splenic vein then this is the renal vein then you will have the third part of duodenum and which renal vein left renal vein not right why because the inferior vena cava is on right side of the aorta so left has to cross the midline clear now apart from that when you will see the anterior relation of the aorta you will realize that abdominal aorta is having a large number of the nerves which are forming the plexes on anterior side of the aorta. So this diagram is showing the plexes. You can see that the nerves are entering here. These are the two nerves which are known as vagal nerve and as soon as the vagal nerve will enter they will form the plexes and all these nerves which are present on the anterior side of your abdominal aorta are going to form the plexes and these are known as celiac nerve plex and aortic nerve plexes. So here you can see in this image that whenever you are reading the autonomic supply of any abdominal organ most of the time the supply comes from these nerve plexes which are present on the anterior aspect of abdominal aorta. So what are the anterior relation of abdominal aorta? First you have to write down the four names which I have just told you body of the pancreas, splenic vein, renal vein of left side and horizontal part or third part of duodenum. Apart from that anteriorly it is related with the nerve plexes which are known as celiac nerve plexes or aortic nerve plexes. Now what are the posterior relation of abdominal aorta? Now when we will talk about the posterior side you will realize that abdominal aorta lies in front of the vertebral column. Now which part of vertebral column particularly? So we have seen that abdominal aorta starts from the T12 to L4. So you will have lower part of the T12, L1, L2, L3 and L4 vertebrae. So these are the 4 to 5 vertebrae which are present on the posterior side of the abdominal aorta. Apart from that you know that uh, vertebral areas are having a thick band. That band is present throughout the length that is known as anterior longitudinal ligament. So here you will have this white color band and this white band is your anterior longitudinal ligament which is going downward till your sacrum. Clear? Now apart from that posteriorly what you will find? You will find some of the lumbar veins and these lumbar veins are also lies posteriorly behind the your abdominal aorta. So what are the three relations behind the abdominal aorta? What bodies of your upper lum, uh, four uh, lumbar vertebrae, then you will have intervertebral disc of the those adjacent vertebrae, then you will have the anterior longitudinal ligament and some of the lumbar veins. So in this image you can see this is your aorta but the important thing which you have to keep in mind that aorta is not coming in the center it is going little bit left of the midline. Second thing is posteriorly we will have this white color band. This band is known as anterior longitudinal ligament. Behind the band you are having the bodies of your lumbar vertebrae and you will have the lumbar veins which you can appreciate in this image that these lumbar veins are visible here which are going behind the your aorta. Clear? Now what are the right and left relation? Now when you will talk about the right relation of aorta and left relation of aorta, you have to understand that first thing is that once you are having the opening that is the hiatus, 
Hiatus is nothing but it is a gap between the diaphragm and your vertebral column. So that gap is allowing entry of your aorta and there are two crusts of the diaphragm are present on both the side of the hiatus. So one side you have the right crust of diaphragm, another side you have the left crust of diaphragm. So on the right side, what you will have? You will have the right crust of the diaphragm. Now apart from that, if you will see the remaining part of the aorta, you will realize that here parallel to the abdominal aorta, you will find inferior vena cava with placed here. Clear? So this is something is very important to understand that inferior vena cava is a right side structure and abdominal aorta is a midline structure in upper part and it has a slight left shift in the lower part. Now what are the other structure you will find in this relation on the right side? So there are some very important structures. Now if you will go and see my class of the thoracic duct, we have already seen that this green color tube which is a thoracic duct start from a dilated end is known as cisterna chile. So cisterna chile is, is lies on the right side of abdominal aorta just near to this right crust of your diaphragm. So this is the right crust of the diaphragm and you have to understand that cisterna chile is a very important relation of abdominal aorta along with this lower portion of thoracic duct. So this is the something is important that in upper part the aorta is related with the cisterna chile and the initial formation of the thoracic duct. Plus there is a formation of a zygous vein again in the upper part on right side. Now here you can see that when we are talking about the formation of a zygous vein, a zygous vein formed by the fusion of subcostal vein. So this is your subcostal vein and it is going to merge with the lumbar vein. So this is your ascending lumbar vein. This ascending lumbar vein is receiving different lumbar veins which are going to drain into this ascending lumbar vein. So ascending lumbar vein join this and it is going to form this initial formation of a zygous vein. So a zygous vein, here you will have the inferior vena cava, cisterna chile and initial portion of your thoracic duct. So all these things are present on the right side of aorta and they are also closely related with this portion of your uh, diaphragm which is known as right crust of diaphragm. Clear? What are the left relation? So on the left side you will have the left crust of the diaphragm which is very logical thing which you have to understand. Apart from that on the left side you will have the pancreas and you will have the fourth part of duodenum. So my dear friends, duodenum comes at two places in relation of the abdominal aorta. First is the horizontal portion which crosses the aorta horizontally anteriorly and the fourth portion that is the small ascending part present on the left side of abdominal aorta. So in this image if you will see what you are able to see that this is the horizontal portion of the duodenum or the third part of duodenum and this is its smaller fourth part of the duodenum. Apart from that, what you are able to understand that this is your midline abdominal aorta. Now this is your hiatus and this is your abdominal aorta position. Now on the left side, this is related with the pancreas. So pancreas is having relation on its anterior aspect and on the left side. In nutshell, when we are talking about the anterior relation, posterior relation, right relation, left relation, you should keep few things in mind that pancreas comes anteriorly as well as on left. Your duodenum comes anteriorly as well as on the left. When you will have the relation in term of your diaphragm, it is having the right crust on the right side, left crust on the left side, lumbar veins and vertebral column on the posterior side. Now, what are the different branches of your abdominal aorta? So the branches has been divided into the two fashion. There are two type of classification. The first is that some would say on the basis of their position, it can be anterior branches, lateral branches and posterior branches. Some is having a different criteria of the classification. That is the visceral branches, posterior and terminal. Now these visceral branches are supplying the organs. These are related with the visceras. Posterior branches supplies the body wall and the diaphragm and terminal branches will go into the pelvis and lower limb. 
So what are the visceral branches? Now visceral branches are the branches which may be paired or it may be unpaired branches which are going to supply different organs. Now when we we'll talk about the ventral visceral branches, the ventral visceral branches develops from the ventral splanchnic or vitelline arteries and they supply the different derivatives of your intestine or gut tube. So there are three unpaired visceral branches or anterior branches of the abdominal aorta. These you know celiac trunk, superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric arteries. And we know that celiac trunk supply the derivatives of the foregut, superior mesenteric for the midgut and inferior mesenteric supply the derivatives of hindgut. Now in this image also you can appreciate that this is the point of the origin of celiac trunk. This is the point of the origin of your superior mesenteric artery and this is the point origin of inferior mesenteric artery. Now what are the paired visceral branches? So we have seen that the visceral branches can be unpaired and the paired. When you will have the paired visceral branches, these are generally lateral side branches. They arise from the sides of your abdominal aorta. So they are known as lateral branches and they develop from the lateral splanchnic or mesonephric arteries and they supply the viscera derived from intermediate mesoderm. Now my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are talking about intraembryonic mesoderm, it has been classified in the three part, paraaxial, intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. Now that intermediate mesoderm is going to form your urogenital system. So when we will talk about the paired visceral branches, they are going to supply your urogenital ridge derivatives which are coming from intermediate mesoderm. So what these are? So you know that there is a presence of the adrenal gland and adrenal gland is supplied by the three sets of the arteries, superior, middle and inferior suprarenal artery. But the middle suprarenal artery is a direct branch of your abdominal aorta. Then you will have the renal arteries, you have right and left kidney which are supplied by the right and left renal arteries. And then you will have the gonadal arteries which are supplying the testes in case of the male and ovaries in case of the female. So if you will see this image and if you have to mark these three paired arteries, here you can see that this is your adrenal gland. Now this adrenal gland is supplied by this direct branch and this is the direct branch of your abdominal aorta and it is marked as middle suprarenal artery. Then you have these branches which are going to the respective kidneys. So these are the paired right and left renal arteries and these are the branches which are going downward and these are the right and left gonadal arteries. Clear? Then what is about the three these arteries? We have some few lines about these three paired arteries. <coughs> First is what about specific about the middle suprarenal. Middle suprarenal arises at the level of superior mesenteric artery just above the renal artery. Question sometimes you have in exam that, that which arteries arises at the level of superior mesenteric. The answer is middle suprarenal. Clear? These suprarenal arteries passes laterally slightly upward over the crust of the diaphragm on respective side and ultimately they will supply the adrenal gland. So here you can see that where is the crust? Now you can see that this is the crust of your right side. Here is the crust of the left side and the arteries are passing anterior to the respective crest of the diaphragm to supply the right and left adrenal glands. Now what is the specific about renal artery? Renal arteries are the larger lateral branches. It arises just inferior to the origin of superior mesenteric between the level of L1 and L2. So I just told you that superior mesenteric artery can be taken as a landmark and if you have the question which artery arises at the level of superior mesenteric that is middle suprarenal and if you will have the question or just below sometimes you have this just below that is answer is right and left renal artery. So here you can see that this is your 
left side renal artery this is your right side renal artery this is your origin of superior mesenteric artery clear the right renal passes laterally behind the inferior vena cava to reach the hilum now see there are two question which vein crosses the uh, which large structure and which artery crosses in term of renal here you can see that in this image you have to understand this concept my dear students this is your inferior vena cava and this is your abdominal aorta now this is the right kidney and this is the left kidney clear now left renal vein has to drain into the inferior vena cava so which vein is crossing the aorta which vein is crossing the aorta answer is left why left is crossing the aorta because the inferior vena cava is on the right side that's why the left renal vein has to cross the aorta on the other side if we'll talk about the arteries now arteries are here now this is your left renal artery which is not crossing the midline this is the right renal artery which is also not crossing the midline why they are not crossing the midline because abdominal aorta is almost a midline structure but but the question is which artery comes in contact with inferior vena cava answer is right why right because you have the right side inferior vena cava now the next question is that the right renal artery passes anterior to the inferior vena cava or posterior to the inferior vena cava answer is posterior to the inferior vena cava so this is something to understand that right renal artery passes laterally behind the inferior vena cava to approach the hilum of right kidney clear the left renal artery is also going on the left side but arteries are always behind the vein that's why whenever you are having the side determination of the kidney you are having this v a and ureter what is the relation from anterior to posterior vein artery and ureter okay clear so this is the concept which you have to maintain in your mind that whenever you are identifying the kidney you are having the three structure anteriorly you will have the renal vein renal artery and pelvic part of the ureter so the arteries are always behind the veins each artery give off the inferior supra renal branches and it also supply the ureter so this is something is also important the renal artery is not only supplying the kidney but they are also supplying the adrenal gland as well as the ureter so now when you will see the adrenal gland this adrenal gland we have seen the two branches one is the direct branch of abdominal aorta which is this is the middle supra renal artery second you are able to understand that there are some branches which are coming from from the renal artery and this artery which is coming from the renal artery is inferior renal artery so this is the left uh, sorry left renal artery and from the left renal artery this is your inferior adrenal artery or inferior supra renal artery so inferior supra renal artery is a branch of renal artery while the middle supra renal artery is a direct branch of abdominal aorta now what about the gonadal arteries so when we will have the gonadal arteries we have the testicular arteries and we have the ovarian artery so testicular artery arises below the origin of renal artery they passes downward laterally on the swass major muscle so in this image you can see that these are your swass major muscles on both the side and on the swass major you are having this arteries which are going downward and what are these arteries gonadal arteries or in case of the male it is a testicular artery in case of the female ovarian artery on the right side artery crosses in front of the inferior vena cava and ureter of the right side joint to femoral now and ultimately it will go deep to the ileum but on the left side the artery crosses the front of the ureter and the joint of femoral it crosses the uh, ureter and the joint of femoral and it will go deep to the colon so these are the few differences between the course of right and left gonadal artery sometimes you have this question so you have to keep this thing in mind on the right side you are having the ileum 
on the left side you are having the colon so on the right side the right gonadal disappear behind the ilium but on the left side the left gonadal artery disappear behind the colon apart from that there is a one more important question that ureter lies behind the gonadal arteries or anterior to the gonadal arteries so here in this image if you will see what you are able to understand where is the ureter so this is the ureter now this is your kidneys and from the kidney you can see this is the ureter now where the artery is crossing so this is the point where artery is crossing the ureter but you have to understand that artery lies anterior to the ureter artery lies anterior to the ureter so this is what you have to understand the second thing is that the testicular artery ultimately joins the spermatic cord through the deep inguinal ring and then it traverses the inguinal canal so here you can see that these are the areas where you have the placement of the your scrotum so the artery ultimately enters into the testes and you can see that this is the point of your deep inguinal ring this should be the point of superficial ring and this part is of your inguinal canal so the only important concept which is always been asked in exam about the gonadal artery is that gonadal artery lies anterior to the sous major and second thing is gonadal artery crosses the ureter from their anterior aspect clear but there is a few difference between the ovarian artery and testicular artery the difference is that though the origin is same their course on the posterior wall is almost similar that you will rise that they also arises below the origin of renal artery they passes downward they runs anteriorly on the sous major muscle the ovarian artery crosses the external iliac vein at the pelvic brim to enters the suspensory or infundibular pelvic ligament now this is the difference you have to understand this difference my dear students that when you will have the both male and female uh, abdomen you will realize that in case of the female these gonadal arteries are not approaching to this point what is that deep ring what is that superficial ring now we know that the in case of male the deep ring allow the entry of the artery and then the artery will come out through the superficial ring to enter into your scrotum but in case of the female we know that the inguinal canal is having round ligament of uterus rather than spermatic cord and you don't have the gonadal artery so what is the difference the difference is that the gonads are here in case of the female the gonads that means ovaries are here inside the lateral wall of the pelvis along the lateral wall of pelvis so this artery has to go to this point rather than this area in case of the male you have seen that the gonadal arteries are approaching this area so up to this portion if you will see the course it is almost similar that means you will find the gonadal arteries are arising from the abdominal aorta right side artery is crossing the inferior vena cava crossing the ureters so that should always there in the female also but when you will reach to this point that means at the pelvic brim near the pelvic brim the course of ovarian artery will different from the testicular artery clear now what will happen here that now what will happen the ovarian artery crosses the external iliac vessels at the pelvic brim at this point they will cross the external iliac vessels and they will enter into the suspensory ligament of ovary which is known as infundibulo pelvic ligament so this infundibulo pelvic ligament is actually a part of your broad ligament so this ovarian artery ultimately enters into the broad ligament and it has to approach the ovary and not only the ovary it also supply the adjacent part of fallopian tube or uterine tube and it also supply the pelvic parts of your ureter clear so you have to keep this difference in your mind that when we are talking about the testicular arteries testicular artery will approach the deep ring and then they come out through the superficial ring but ovarian artery has no relation with the inguinal canal 
and the ovarian arteries will enter into the pelvis through a peritoneal fold which is known as suspensory ligament of ovary and they ultimately approach the ovaries. Clear? Now, what next is the posterior branches of abdominal aorta? So, the posterior branches of abdominal aorta represent the somatic intersegmental arteries and these are the vessels supplying the diaphragm or the body wall. Now, these posterior branches are inferior phrenic, ileo -lum uh, lumbar arteries and median sacral arteries. So, when you will see this diagram of your abdominal aorta, you will have the three posterior branches. This is the lowermost posterior branch which is running on the midline of sacrum. This is median sacral artery. On the sides, you can see these are the branches which are visible here. These are your lumbar arteries which are coming from the posterior side and then you have the inferior phrenic artery which is a highest artery. Now, this is your diaphragm and adjacent to the diaphragm you are having these phrenic arteries on the inferior surface of the diaphragm which are known as inferior phrenic artery. So, first is what about inferior phrenic artery? So, inferior phrenic artery arises from the aorta just above the celiac trunk. So, here again if you will see the celiac trunk, this is the celiac trunk just above the celiac trunk on both the side you are having the respective inferior phrenic. Now, these inferior phrenic arteries runs upward laterally on the corresponding crust of the diaphragm. So, that is very obvious that it has to cross the crust on the respective side medial to the suprarenal. So, now this is your suprarenal gland and just on medial side of the suprarenal gland you are finding these two arch of the arteries and these two arch of the arteries are formed by your inferior phrenic. Now, each arteries are giving the superior suprarenal artery. Now, these are the branches which are supplying the adrenal gland and these are known as superior suprarenal arteries which are more than one. So, in nutshell now you are having the three sources of the blood supply to the adrenal gland. One is from the inferior phrenic, second is directly from the abdominal aorta and third is from the renal arteries. So, these are known as superior suprarenal, this direct branch is known as middle suprarenal and this branch from the renal artery is known as inferior suprarenal artery, clear? So, this is something is important to understand for your exam. Now, what about lumbar arteries? Now, my dear friends, lumbar arteries arises from the posterior side, from the aorta, opposite the bodies of upper four lumbar vertebrae and these arteries runs across the side of your lumbar vertebrae and the most important thing is that once they will cross the swast major and quadratus lumborum, these arteries will disappear in the anterior abdominal wall between the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscle. So, in this image also you can see that these are the arteries which are arising from the aorta and they are crossing the your swast major and quadratus lumborum, but not anterior side on the posterior side. For that you have to understand this video clip where you can see that on this side you can see the origin of your lumbar arteries. Now, the arteries are going and making a turn along the lateral wall. In this side you can see the placement of the muscles. So, if you will remove first the inferior vena cava, then you are able to visible the origin of these four lumbar arteries. Now, if you will remove the swast major, you are able to appreciate that the arteries are present behind the swast major. Now, if you will remove the quadratus lumborum, you will still find the arteries are behind the quadratus lumborum. Now, then you will have the origin of your transversus abdominis and the internal oblique. So, if you will remove the transversus abdominis, you can see the arteries are present on inner side of internal oblique muscle. So, when you are reading the lumbar arteries, they arises from the side of your posterior part of abdominal aorta, then they will go behind the swast major, behind the quadratus lumborum and then they will enter between the transversus abdominis and internal oblique and once you will remove the transversus abdominis, the arteries are visible on inner side of internal oblique muscle. Now, what is the third posterior branch is median sacral artery. The median sacral artery represents the continuation of primitive dorsal aorta. This is very very commonly asked question 
which is the following branch is known as continuation of dorsal aorta. So continuation of dorsal aorta is median sacral artery. This median sacral artery arises just above the bifurcation from the posterior side and it runs downward into the your pelvis in front of the sacrum and coccyx and it supplies the rectum and it also anastomos with the branches of your iliolumbar artery and lateral sacral arteries which are the branches of internal iliac. So here in this diagram you can see that this is your median sacral artery and this median sacral artery is anastomosing with the branches of internal iliac like this is your iliolumbar so it is giving branch which will anastomose these are the lateral sacral arteries and these are the branches of the lateral sacral which will anastomose with the branches of median sacral arteries. Lastly, the terminal branches. So there are two terminal branches which you know that these are the right and left common iliac and these common iliac is going to supply the pelvis and lower limb. So this is your right common iliac and left common iliac. Now what are the few things which you should know about the common iliac arteries that the common iliac arteries begin in front of the vertebrae L4 and uh, uh, lower border of L4, 1.25 centimeter on the left side of the median plane. Why 1.25 centimeter left? I already explained you that abdominal aorta is having a midline position, but in the lower part, it tilt little bit left of the midline. So whenever we are talking about the termination, it terminate 1.25 centimeter on the uh, left side of midline and at that level your common iliac starts at the lower border of L4 because in the initial part I told you that the abdominal aorta is from T12 to L4 so common iliac arises at the level of L4. On each side is passes downward laterally and they end in front of the sacroiliac joint at the level of lumbosacral intervertebral disc by dividing into the external internal iliac artery. Now what is the meaning? The meaning is that this is the origin of your common iliac. Now this common iliac will again terminate at this point into the external iliac and internal iliac. So what is this level? Answer is L4. Now what is this level? Now for this level you can see that this is a intervertebral disc. Now this intervertebral disc is a disc of L5 and S1 or lumbosacral joint clear so common iliac arteries are very small arteries they are not having much length and the common iliac starts at the lower part of the l4 and it ends at the lower border of l5 or you can say lumbosacral junction now this common iliac divide into the external iliac and internal iliac internal iliac enters inside the pelvis while external iliac runs along with the pelvic brim and it will form the femoral artery. The right common iliac passes in front of the commencement of the inferior vena cava. Now again this is the question of your exam. Why it runs anteriorly? So you have to understand that inferior vena cava is going to form on the right side of your midline. So when you will have the formation, now this is the point of the formation which is not visible here because this is the left common iliac, this is the right common iliac. Now both the iliac will join at this point and this point of the formation of inferior vena cava is present behind the your right common iliac. So right common iliac artery is very small but still in this small portion posteriorly you will find the commencement of inferior vena cava. The left common iliac artery is shorter than the right, this is the important thing. Now what about the pulsation of the aorta? Now aortic pulsation generally not visible but if they are visible that means you are dealing with a very thin slim person. In these cases where you have the very thin slim person due to the forward convexity of the lumbar vertebral column the aortic pulsation sometimes may be filled in the region of umbilicus. So this is something you have question in exam that where you can feel the pulsation in case of very thin lin person answer is below the umbilicus. So at the end of this class of abdominal aorta you have the idea that from where the abdominal aorta starts at what point it uh, ends and the most important two parts that the relations of the abdominal aorta and different branches of abdominal aorta. 
So this is all for today's class. Thank you.